broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and thank you for joining uh, the November Virtual Pulse webinar series. Uh, in this session, we are going to be going over a day in the life of a radiology director. Before we get started, I did want to go over a couple housekeeping items. If you are having any issues with your sound, you are able to check in the audio section of your dashboard uh, to either join via your speakers or you could uh, join via your phone with the dial-in number and passcodes. We are going to be sending an archive of this recording after, so you will be getting that in the next week or so. Uh, and lastly, we do really appreciate uh, your feedback. So after the webinar, uh, a survey will launch automatically and we'd like to hear from you. Let us know how we did today. So let's go ahead. I'm going to uh, kick things over to Russ Cardwell, who will be introducing our speaker today and going over uh, our agenda. So Russ, why don't you take it, take it away? Very good. Thank you so much, Lisa. And again, thanks for uh, our, I think our fourth in our series of virtual pulses this year, where we talked about some reimbursement changes and, uh, different legislation that's affecting our industry and different business models. And again, we thought we would we would uh, change it up today and, and have a talk with Bill Algy, whom I've known for many years. We, we were talking probably at least eight, but probably longer than that years together. But Bill is a is a I would say an icon in our industry. He's been a president of uh, AHRA and served on the board of directors, as you can read on the screen. Um, and 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 very active in other uh, other areas of our industry. So we're delighted to have Bill Algy, the Director of Imaging Services from Columbus Regional in Columbus, Indiana. So thanks for being with us today, Bill. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, so what we thought we would do is, uh, again, this is just a kind of open dialogue where we continue to uh, talk about uh, issues that face our industry. And we wanted to kind of talk about what is a day in the life of a radiology director like. Uh, so first of all, before we jump into some of the questions, maybe you can um, tell us about yourself, your experience, and uh, a little bit about the market that your organization serves. Great. Well, first of all, uh, happy radio radiologic technologist week to everybody yes. that are techs or have techs work for them. I, it's, uh, it's a great week to be doing this. I didn't realize when we scheduled this that it was going to be this week, but it's pretty cool. As a technologist myself, I'm uh, very proud to be one. So, um, so uh, like you said, my name is Bill Algy. I work at Columbus Regional Hospital, which is located about 40 miles south of Indianapolis in Columbus, Indiana. Um, on November 2nd, I was here 35 years. So um, I, fresh off the farm, right out of x-ray school, I came here um, about six months after school and, uh, and have not left. So I've had a couple of opportunities to leave, actually more than a couple, but i um, always found this to be a good place to land. Um, and found that the organization has been a great place to work and they've always let me grow and do the things that I want to do and grow in it as a professional. So that's been great. Um, we are a community-based hospital, 250 beds is what we're licensed for. Um, like most of anybody else that might be listening, it's a hospital-based system. Uh, we are trying to work toward single beds. So we try to keep single beds. So when we get to about 150, people start freaking out a little bit. Um, so we, <laughs> it's like, oh, we're busting at the scene. So we start making up, um, you know, adjustments for that. But um, overall, it's a great community hospital. Um, and uh, it's like it's very, very vibrant. Um, you know, we, we've done a great job of staving off the, uh, the big, uh, big groups from the north and the south. Um, Louisville, we're like kind of nestled between Louisville and Indianapolis. But um, done a great job of holding our own. So that's been very important for us. So. Very good. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for that update. I think it's good good that people understand where what market you're serving and the uh, the yeah, challenges. Let me, let, me, let, Russ, let me add one more thing. I, I did sure. forget to mention. So we have a main campus, um, and then I also have an, an outpatient imaging center um, called CDI, which is Columbus Diagnostic Imaging, not the old CDI Centers for Diagnostic Imaging. So um, thank. I just want to thank them for changing their name. That was very helpful. Great. <laughs> <laughs> we, we really appreciate that. Um, and then we also have a breast health uh, center too that is across the uh, literally across the creek from us. Um, so there you go. Nice. Yeah, Sorry that's great. That. No, that's great. Thanks for adding those other locations. Um, so let's jump right into it. And again, I'll, I'll this will be like a fastball right over the plate. But um, I think in our industry, we, well, I know in our industry there has been uh, reimbursement impacts that have affected radiology for years. I mean, really, I think going back to the Deficit Reduction Act of 2006, that really, in my mind, is what kind of started it all. But there's been a number of pieces of legislation that have affected our our industry. But last year, the um, the budget neutrality rule uh, basically 
it was supposed to be a dire like 10 no, 10 or 11 percent cut and you know there was a late minute adjustment to make it only a four percent cut but what does that mean we're, we're hearing that there's there could be another another round of those cuts I, i've heard somewhere in the six percent range uh for next year and, and maybe it'll go right up to christmas again before there's some some saving uh legislation that makes it less but um can you talk about any what impact that might have on you? I know as a community hospital, you hire a third party reading group, but it probably still has an impact on what happens, you know, for the patients you serve. So could you talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, you know, I think that, you know, whether you have a, your own group, a third party group, you know, a, a, a big conglomerate group, you know, of radiology, uh, radiologists, you have to, you know, we have to be partners. So we have to work together. We have to, you know, help support each other in a variety of different ways. So um, yeah, definitely something that we're that we're looking at even more now. Um, you know, I think the latest thing I've seen to your point is then you know next year maybe another three percent cut. Um, you know, and I don't you know you that can't keep going. You know, there's a lot of things going on I think in our industry right now in healthcare um, and in imaging that you know, and we're going to talk a little bit more about those things with human capital and those kind of things. They just have to at some point um, correct themselves. Otherwise, there's going to be a huge mess. Um, but you know we're in con we're in, we uh, do have a third we do have a group that we are is a local group to see to our facility. Um, we have not had a national group. I know a lot of facilities have went to more of a national group, and we really um, nestled here in um, you know in in Indiana. We wanted to keep a hometown feel. Um, most of the guys live here. If not, they know the guys that they've hired because they've worked with them in the past. So they're a pretty uh, you know tight knit group, which is great. Um, so, uh, you know, I think we all have a stake in the game um, of trying to make sure that we help our, you know, our imaging partners, you know, the radiologists, making sure that they can survive. And I think right now it's just, it's, it's a struggle, um, just in imaging in general, um, from that perspective, especially with radiologists. I mean, you know, I, I think that there's not um, radiologists falling out of the sky. Um, they're not graduating from school 10 times more than what they did you know, 10 years ago, the number's shrinking and it just, it's making it worse. Um, and as, you know, doctors are going to medical school and they're looking at what specialty they want to go into and they see these cuts keep continuing to happen. It, it does, you know, do I really want to do that? Is it really going to be here in next year's? Is it going to still be a local group or go to a national group? And, and all of that stuff plays into their decision making. Yeah, so I've, I've actually heard some of the same things. You know, the enrollment of some of the residency programs is is getting lower year to year. And again, they hear things like AI, artificial intelligence, which we're going to talk more about later. But I think the reimbursement, the AI, the, you know, all that kind of contributes to this factor of uh, fewer fewer younger people want to get into the field. So uh, yeah, we do want to talk about how, kind of how that will Im impact our industry. Um, just focusing on the cost reduction for a moment. Um, so what is what is your organization? Um, trying to do to reduce costs uh, or what are you hearing from other radiology leaders to try to reduce costs to try to I mean we've got inflation on the one end and you've got lower reimbursement on the other end and, and that's squeezing you in the middle <laughs> so uh, is there any ideas you can you can share with our colleagues on the phone today or or maybe what other leaders you're hearing from talk about uh, strategies well I, I think it's it's not business as usual that's for sure um, you know anything we were doing you know two three years ago we don't we, we don't have that luxury anymore um, you know, I think most people use some kind of a benchmark data to look at productivity. Um, they look at that for, um, you know, just and and where you know what kind of um, you know, your volumes. You know, they, that's one of the things that we all look at and track. Um, yeah, at one point in time, I think people were were benchmarked at the 50th percentile, um, maybe 60th percentile, 40th percent. Now people are benchmarked typically at the 40th percentile, some at the 30th percentile. Um, and the challenge that comes with that, um, you know, good, bad, whatever, is when you get to that those points and you're running on a pretty low um, reserve, so to speak, with 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 people. Um, when you do have a situation that's going on right now and it's going on everywhere, and and is you know um, people leaving leaving hospitals to join agencies, um, and that's just a challenge. So. I think, you know, to your question, you know, what we've really tried to do is try to figure out where the balance is and what makes sense. Um, you know, some of the stuff we've tried to do is when we look at capital and purchasing capital equipment, um, you know, 
it, that is a huge that is a huge expense. You know, radiology and surgery probably spend more money than anybody else on on capital in an organization. Um, that you know, obviously that that's a huge huge um, you know dollar figures. Um, I've looked at in the last couple of years. You know, I, I've spent more time looking at you know used equipment, refurbed equipment, um, you know, manufactured you know recertified equipment, um, because I you know. It, does that make more sense? Um, does that kind of get you through um, through the realm? I think the idea, you know, at one point in time, and I, you know, every time we buy any equipment, I always ask, you know, you know, what's the lifetime of this equipment? And you always put seven years. I think anybody that's listening to this will probably say they they put seven years on it forever, and then it's turned to ten, and now you just go, God knows, <laughs> 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 until you can figure out how to get the money, until you can figure out how to. Um, you know, you know, you know, make a good case for it. But, um, and it doesn't mean we don't, I mean, it just means that, you know, you really have to look at things differently because those dollars all have to go somewhere. Um, and it's, you know, as, you know, as you said, it's really challenging and, um, you know, controlling expense is really, 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 I think more of a challenge today. And, I, and I, I've said this before, I said this before year, a couple of years ago, you know, uh, you know, on a um, on a discussion with a you know with someone that you know more today than any other time we're being squeezed to do more with less. Um, today we're being squeezed to do more with less, right? Um, but I don't, you know, I, I don't have a magic wand. If I had a magic wand, I'd probably be um, sitting somewhere on a beach. <laughs> but uh, it's it is it is a challenge for sure, and I think you have to look at all different aspects. Um, you know, I think from, from managing that perspective too, you have to look at it, it, it. We're not, it's not business as usual. So, um, controlling costs, it looks at, do we need the same number of staff here at the same time that we've always had them here? You know, we've always, you know, for a while, I think a lot of people have always worked 12 hour shifts or they've always worked, you know, at one point we had 16 hour shifts and now they've come back and they've said, yeah, you can't, you, you don't get to do that anymore. Um, but you know you have each you have shifts that work Monday through Friday, so you have to be. Now we're really challenged to be a lot more flexible, um, and and trying to meet meet what our what our staff needs are, as well as trying to meet you know productivity levels. So it's it's quite a challenge, and I, I wish I had the magic bean because if I did, I would sell it. <laughs> well, it's not, it. It sounds like you're definitely looking at the 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 capital equipment expense as one way with the refurbished equipment is one thing and productivity measures and the, but then also trying to balance that with your employees. So that's, you know, looking at all the main things, people process and technology. Um, uh, just uh, let's, uh, we talked about equipment there for a moment. Maybe we can just tag onto that with this next question, which is um, we know with supply chain issues, that's delaying the delivery of some equipment. Now you talked about the re refurbished market. So maybe that's already here in the U S but, other equipment we know is manufactured, you know, overseas and needs to get shipped here. So, are you are you still looking at new equipment? And and if so, do, do these supply chain issues, you know, is that having an effect on the care you can provide your patients? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're got. I have, um, you know, talking about the day in the life of a director. So I've got three projects going on right now: replacing some rad rooms, um, doing a, um, a pet, replacing our pet. Um, PET CT and also a CT scanner. So, you know, hey, why not do three great big projects all at once? <laughs> why spread them out throughout the year? That makes no sense. Um, so, yeah. So to your point, though, you know, one of the vendors that we're that we've, um, you know, we've been looking at and talking and having some great conversations with is, you know, the lead time on um, delivery is, you know, 25, 26 weeks. Um, you know, I can remember a time when they would say, um, you know, if you cut the PO on this day, I can have it to you in, you know, 90 days. You know, because because honest to God, I had not heard 27 weeks or 25, 25 weeks. And when he said 25 weeks, I was like, excuse me, did you say 25 weeks? <laughs> um, and, 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 and come to find out, it's not, you know, it's not just one vendor. It's happening um, to a couple. And, you know, and they, whether the vendors are here, you know, based in the United States and manufacturing in the United States or not, it's kind of irrelevant because we all know things come, you know, all those parts come from all over the world. Um, you know, they're coming from, you know, you, you know, somewhere in China or somewhere like that, you know, um, they're manufactured in Germany. There's just, there's just stuff everywhere. Um, 
And so, yeah, it's going to be, we, we have got a little bit of a time frame, and, and uh, I had to tell some cardiologists that, you know, we're going to get what we want, what we need to continue our project that we're working on, but it's not going to be tomorrow. <laughs> and it's not my fault, <laughs> which I thought was the most important part. So. <laughs> uh, Cause they're, you know, they're always looking for, for a fair, you know, finger to point at. So, um, but I think in general, you know, I think that's, you know, supply chain is an issue. It's going to be, there was a, um, a local business uh, discussion here yesterday. Um, I didn't get to attend it, but one of the things I was told out of it was they were talking about, you know, the, the, um, the only people right now that have it worse from a, from a supply, meaning capital perspective than hospitals and healthcare is trucking industry. Um, and, you know, everything anybody gets in the world comes on a truck. <laughs> so, that's a huge, huge issue, for sure. Yeah. So, are you extending? I mean, with uh, I guess for new equipment that you don't have, your it would be a delay of getting those projects online. But for ones where it's a replacement, I, I guess you're just servicing with the older equipment that much longer until the new equipment comes. Yeah, you're just you're stretching. Um, you know, and and like I said before, I think we're a lot of us are in this shape where we didn't replace things in five years, seven years even 10 years, you know, it works. Um, it, uh, you know, it, it pro still provides great, you know, good images. It's not, it's not, you know, bad in any way, shape or form, but you know, you do have a little more time where you have some downtime, some unexpected downtime, you know, um, and you know, technology has, you know, there's been a lot of advances, so you want to take advantage of those. So um, yeah, you just have to you know, keep this bad boy limping along <laughs> for a little while longer. Yeah, and I can imagine that adds some strain uh, to, to your job, definitely. Um, we'll come back to technology in a moment, but I do want to jump into um, some of the human capital. Again, we uh, it doesn't really matter what the industry is. Everyone is short of people right now, and I'm sure that I'm, every health system I talk to um, has a similar challenge. So um, are you able to staff properly? You know, What do you have to say about some of these signing bonuses that we hear about and uh, maybe it's more nursing, but maybe it's some other areas that affect technologists as well. But what, what do you have to say about about this whole labor dynamic that's happening in our market right now? Uh, the madness has to stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, that that would be my that would be my statement. Um, you know, yeah, we're we are um, we you know we have some openings here. Um, we have about a ten percent vacancy rate right now, um, which is very is really pretty low when I hear what my peers have. Um, I'll give you a great example in the Indianapolis area in that market. One of the big health systems up there. I just got an e I got an email yesterday. They have 49 openings in the health system for re for rad techs. 49. Wow. That's crazy. Um, now I don't know. Those could be, you know, CT techs, diagnostic techs, MR. It could be a variety of things, but still, 49 is huge. Um, we had done a little research not long ago um, and found that from the Indianapolis market down to the Louisville market, there were 1557 rad tech openings for diagnostic in, in just that. I mean, it's, it's the numbers are astounding there. I've, I've never, ever heard of anything like this before. Um, it, it's, it's crazy. Um, and it's people, you know, that I think people are jumping ship for a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, I think some of it is, you know, COVID. Some hospitals, you know, when, when COVID came along, they mandated people get COVID vaccinated. So some of those folks have said, adios, I'm not interested in playing there. Um, you know, now, as of last week, that's going to change. You won't be able to play in a hospital. You won't be able to work in a hospital if you're not, you know, at least until somebody, you know, files an injunction that sticks for a while. Um, that'd be great. Um, but you know, that, that's going to, that's people left for that reason. And there were other people that due to COVID, they just left the market and that's left opening. Um, and the travel, the travel agency business is just, it's, it's insane. We've, we've offered, um, you know, what we've offered before for things, uh, for, for techs, um, to an agency at a rate and they come back and they go, that they won't even touch it, man. You, you, you're, you're not, you're not even in the ballpark. I'm like, how can we not be in the ballpark? <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it, it shifted so much and there's so many openings that people can just can just choose and go wherever they want. Um, and, you know, that eventually I think that will all catch up. But but, uh, 
you know, we've got to really work together. So one of the things I've taken, an approach I've taken, um, is, you know, my role in the, you know, in the AHRA led me to become friends with some very, you know, people here in Indiana and other radiology directors. Um, so one of the things that, that we're doing is on Friday, we're having a meeting. Um, I think there'll probably be 20, hopefully 20 people-ish to maybe 25 radiology managers and directors just to talk about how do we, how do we tackle this beast? Um, because my theory about it is we're going to have to figure out how to fix this because nobody's going to fix it for us. So we've got to figure out how do we do this. Um, and, and, and it's a struggle. Um, what we have, a, we, we hired somebody from a new hospital, I mean, from a hospital north of us for a position here. Um, and that person called Liz, who's one of my managers and said, Hey, um, they've had X number of more people have quit since I took this position. They really need me to stay until December. Can I, can I stay? Will you let me come later than what we, what we had planned? And um, Liz said, yeah, you know, cause we got to help each other out. You know, we, we've got to try to figure this out. Um, because it's not, none of us are going to, no, nobody's going to win. Nobody's winning right now. The amount of money that we're paying agency people, nobody's going to win out of that. The only people are going to win out of that are the agencies. And I'm not, I'm not bad mouthing agencies that are there for, they serve a great purpose. Absolutely. No question. Um, it's just this other phenomenon that's going on is it's, it's crazy. And if any other directors that are on here or anybody else that's on here that, that, has figured out a way to fix this problem. Um, just uh, shoot me an email. <laughs> I have to listen. Um, but I'm I'm hoping that our in our call on Friday we spend some time talking about um, just ideas people have um, about you know what they're doing there. Um, and you know if nothing else we can all cry in our beer a little bit because we're all in the same boat. I mean, you know that's the that's the great thing about imaging and and great thing about our industry I think is. We all are in the same boat. Maybe it's different boats, different ships. We're all, but we're all sailing and paddling in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I've always found that we support each other and help each other out. And um, you know, it, that that's that's something that I don't hear when I talk to my peer leaders in the organization. So that's a great thing that I, I'm very proud of um, to be part of. Yeah, I, that's I, I've been in radiology dedicated, I think, for the last 17 years, and I've noticed a similar kind of unified spirit that way where people do want to advance advance their goals, but it's it's usually in the same direction as well. So good comment there. And again, just a, a quick comment to everyone listening. If you have other ideas, like like Bill has said, maybe you can put them in the comment or if you have a question, we can we can get to that at the end about how to how to improve the situation because there is a finite number of resources, but if if they're just signing bonus to 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 steal from one another, the the, the pot isn't getting bigger to help the industry. And I think that's Bill, that's what I'm impressed about with this. Um, I don't know if you call it a summit or what you call it with this group in Indiana, but it's a good initiative. <laughs> yeah, I, I I didn't name it anything. I just I think I probably said "woe is me." <laughs> it's probably what I said um, yeah. just to get us all all in the same room. But I think you know I I think that um, there's just been some you know real kind of um, very disturbing things that have happened to this. I mean you know I know somebody in California that you know. The entire nuclear team left, gave them notice at the same day. Um, you know, I know somebody in you know another facility that, you know, they were having trouble, so they gave everybody you know um, in in an MRI a five dollar pay increase, and it just flips everything else upside down for them too. And it just it gets it's it creates this dynamic, and it's it's insane. I, I just yeah, I'm just I'm at a loss. I wish I knew how to figure it out, but. Um, Definitely trying to figure it out and definitely open to suggestions. <laughs> if anybody well, has any. Yeah, let's see what other people might have as comments or questions here as we get to the end. I just have two more questions that I, have, I want to get to and then we can get to uh, everyone else's questions out there. So we just talked about a lot of the employee side and, and the, the signing bonuses and so forth for em employees. Is there anything you're doing to try to like combat employee burnout? And again, that could be on the tech side or things you're making your to make your radiologist more comfortable or, or just I mean the pressures are incredible but just any tips that you're trying to ease the burnout feeling from all the staff that provide services for you well I think you know I, you know one of the things is you know with it being radiology we you know radiology radiologic technology week um, you know we've done some stuff this week too but we've been doing things we've been you know 
um, we've been buying food periodically. It's like, you know, I know you guys are getting hammered. I'm bringing dinner in tonight. Or it's, um, you know, I know you guys are getting hammered. We're bringing in ice cream. You know, it's those kind of things that, you know, and sometimes that's enough. Another time it's like, dude, I don't need that. I need a body. Get me a body. Okay, so let's let's figure out how to get you another body. Um, and sometimes it's not a tech necessarily. It could be even, even you know, we have tech assistants here. So, I mean, we'll float somebody to another shift just to help out because they know that things are, you know, really, they're really struggling. So we're really trying to be proactive that way. Um, you know, I'm, I'm rounding a lot more. I'm, I'm trying to be out and thanking people. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Um, you know, I, I've been in there. I know how, how it feels. Um, and it, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's that we got to keep that connection with the staff and, and, and our teams. Um, I, I don't refer to my team as a staff. I refer, I refer to my team. We're all in this together. If one group's failing, we got to pick each other up, dust each other off and, and move on. Um, that's, that's how I want it to be. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I got to go around today and, and pass out some cups. We've got cups for all the staff and, uh, put some little logo things on them and stuff like that. And, and, uh, you know, it made everybody, it brightened the people that I was able to pass them out to today. Um, I think the other thing we're done too is, is having our senior leader, um, our VP from our organization has come down and rounded on the staff and, you know, made some, you know, thank you for being here and thank you for all you're doing. And I know you're getting your bottom handed to you. And, you know, we did that during COVID too. And it was really tough during, during the height of COVID because I think people really thought more about, when they kept talking about frontline, you know, the radiology was never mentioned. And when they talked about frontline, I mean, that's, that, that really, but, you know, they work, right? I mean, everybody that walks to the emergency room, you know, got a chest x-ray, right? Um, and everybody, you know, those kinds of things. But, you know, it's just keeping them to understand, getting them to understand that, you know, you don't have to be named as being part of that because you know you are. And we know you are. And that's what really matters. Um, and I, I think that that's where we try to really kind of keep people focused. And, you know, focus on yourself and doing the great work that you do every day and the awesome things you're doing by helping your patients and all that other stuff and what other people say, it doesn't matter. You know what you do. Yeah, that's a good lesson for all of us that uh, we don't have to worry about what other people are saying so much. It is nice when the recognition comes and I think getting your VP to come down is a great idea. The food and the ice cream is a good idea, but uh, just, the, just the encouragement along the way, I think that's, that's probably really good, good advice. Um, okay, so we talked about some of the challenges with the, 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 the human capital, the people side of the business. That would kind of lend itself to a, is, does technology offer answers for some of these things? Maybe not all, but um, we've seen a lot, uh, I mean, probably going back three, four years, RSNA and other meetings where AI vendors, radiology AI vendors are in full bloom. And I, I, I've lost count. It's probably over 100 companies now that, that do this. Um, but I, would, I just want to basically focus the question on, do you see radio, radiology AI as being a way to kind of control some of these cost pressures you have? And is, in there, in, is there any precedent for market consolidation among emerging radiology technology that you've seen in the past? Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, I remember back in the two th early 2000s going to RSNA and uh, walking on, out on the floor. And I think at the time, it felt like there were 350 PAX companies. <laughs> every, every booth you went to was selling PAX. Um, and it was, every, it was everybody's brother. And I remember telling the person I went with, I said, you know, this is, this is great, but it can't sustain itself. You know, there's not going to be, this is going to end, right? Um, there'll be four, five, six, you know, and I think today there's probably four to six, <laughs> maybe 10. Um, but I, but, and I think AI will be, will be very similar. Um, I think right now it's all very niche. -y. Um, you know, you've got lung nodule stuff going on. You've got some cardiac stuff going on. Um, you know, you've got, um, now you're getting people that, you know, some AI stuff that can help read chest x-rays a little quicker, those kind of things. And, and I do think that that is, you know, back to an earlier discussion we were having about, um, you know, radiologists and availability and their, you know, entrance into the market as, as a physician. I think there's some of that is a little spooky for, for docs. I mean, why would you want to spend your time and dollars going into a field as a radiologist that you see what's happening with AI and you think, hmm. 
10 years from now, 15 years from now, am I going to be needed? Yeah. Will there be as many as, as you know, I, I would contend that yes, you will, because I don't see that AI can do every single thing that Radialdus does. Um, but will there be some things? Sure. I think there are definitely, I think there, I think AI has to be looked at as an adjunct to what's going on and what's being read by a physician. It can't be, you know, I don't think we're going to stick. I remember, I remember we were talking about DR, you know, when DR first came on the, on the scene, it was, well, when your image comes out, it's going to go through a reader and it's going to tell you exactly what's wrong with it. And, and, you know, the densities that it finds and it does some of that, but you still got to have a human eye to look at that. I mean, you, you just absolutely do. So I think there's, I think there's that. Um, so I think it will consolidate down itself at some point. Um, but, you know, there's some really cool stuff out there. It's just, to your point, where do I need, where, where, and I only have so many dollars, right? Now I only have so many dollars because we had the discussion a few minutes ago that the pool of money is not getting bigger. The pool of money is getting a lot smaller. And I got to figure out where am I going to put my money? And that's the challenge. It's, it's a, it's a, it's an ugly, ugly thing. <laughs> Well, again, these are these are kind of very common challenges, I think, amongst all providers across the nation. So uh, your expertise and kind of your leadership, you know, I know you're in the AHRA and, and other circles. So I think everyone has appreciated hearing from you. Um, Lisa, this is kind of the end of our prepared questions, but maybe there's some other questions that have come in through the through the chat. Yeah, we do. And, and the conversation has been great. And I'm sure uh, those that are on appreciate all the insight. So we do have a couple questions. Um, and for those that are, are on, if you have any questions, you can certainly add them now to the uh, question drop down in your dashboard. Um, and we'll get to um, as many as we can. And so our first question is, with the staffing shortage that we have, that we are now seeing, we have discussed changing how um, our pay is structured and moving towards tiered positions, cross-trained. Uh, we can com we can perform one, two, or three uh, modalities instead of different pay grades for each modality. We are seeing our general radiology staff moving to an advanced modality due to significant pay increase. The work they work the hardest, and we pay them the least. Do you have any experience with this structure? Yeah, we have we've had multimodality techs that work in diagnostic and CT for quite a number of years. Um, so how our structure works there is they have to work actively in both, um, and they do get paid at a different rate. Um, they do get a bump for for doing that. Um, at one point in time, we talked about having them clock in and out at a different pay rate. Um, uh, you know, through, throughout, like if this day they were scheduled here in this in CT, and then the other day they were scheduled in diagnostic, and finally went, this is just a mess because I want the flexibility of when CT goes, you know, hair turn, gets on fire, I can just move my diagnostic tech over to CT, and I don't have to worry about them running to the clock, and I don't have to worry about them fixing it, because those people are valuable, to your point. I think that's a, that is a great way to start looking at that. Um, Peer pay is something that we've talked about here and that we use in our organization periodically when we have shortages and people are covering shifts that they wouldn't normally cover for long periods of time. For example, FMLA, we have somebody on FMLA. Of course, of course, right? During, during, not only are we short people because people are leaving, we have people that are on FMLA <laughs> because that's how it works, right? Um, so, you know, I, I don't think anybody plans it, but it sure feels that way sometimes, right? Um, <laughs> But I, I think that's a way that, um, you know, we use that tier pay um, and it's different. I've done some, I've read a couple of different things in a couple of different forums that, you know, people pay $7 an hour additional or $10 an hour additional or even 20, it depends. Um, and that really, you know, it trickled down. I think those kind of things really start at nursing and they trickle down to, to us. Um, and I know, I know for a fact, I believe every, every place in the country has been paying tier pay to nurses for a while and I have no issue with it at all. I'm not saying that, but, you know, eventually it does get down to to the uh, imaging folks too. So. All right. So our next question is: uh, Do you have any advice to those considering uh, the use of AI going forward? Well, I think I think for using AI, that's one of the things that we really haven't haven't dived into too much. Um, but I think we I think we're going to be looking at it here more so. 
we have a very active lung nodule review board and a very uh, active um, lung screening program. Um, I think there's a niche for AI in there. Um, we've just got to figure out who the right who the right partner is for us. I think you really need to look at where is it going. What what are you trying to get to? Are you trying to re, you know fast track diagnosis? Are you trying to reduce radiologist reading times? What are those things that you're trying to get at um, by using AI? Um, and I think all those can play a role in it. It's just we've just kind of been working on trying to figure out what new equipment we need to buy right now. So, um, but yeah, I think there's definitely a place for it. Um, I just don't think it's the only thing that's ever going to, you know, it's not the end all to be all. So I think it's a tool. That's that's the right word. It's a tool. <laughs> Absolutely. Russ, do you have anything you want to add to that? I was just going to say, I, I want to kind of echo what Bill has said. I've heard other experts in our field kind of talk about AI and its impact. And I think, you know, I think maybe the sentiment three, four years ago might have been, oh, it's going to replace all radiologists. And I think now the pendulum has swung back to being, it's a complementary tool. You're not going to really, I mean, maybe there are certain things that the, the AI can do all by itself, but I feel like the majority are saying it's very complementary. You still need the, the radiologist who's highly trained, specialized, and has the human reasoning to say, yeah, that, that's an extra nodule or no, it's not. You know, the, the human mind is, is still uh, in a place where AI hasn't gotten to yet. <laughs> uh, and you know, I take that back too. I mean, I, I think back to whenever, whenever um, you saw multiple vendors doing dose tracking. Everybody got hopped up on dose tracking. The ACR started talking about dose tracking when you track dose. And the reality of it is if you have, a dose, a, if you have dose tracking, you're only tracking the dose in your facility. The minute that patient goes to another facility, and has a, has a study done, the dose tracking is only as good as what you have because now it's off. So you just have to figure out what are the things that really work for you and your organization and make sense. It's just, it's just, you know, it's a personal choice. Absolutely. Another question we have, and, and I know you mentioned when we started, you have a lot of irons in the fire right now, so this might be a loaded question, um, but... <laughs> <laughs> what are you focusing on right now uh, as a radiology group? Um, you know, right now I'm focusing on those three projects that I have going on that are going to go to our board on 12, on uh, December 15th. So those are right up front. But I'm really focusing on the staff, in, on, on staffing and what we're doing with that. Um, I probably, you know, I have two great managers. I'm very blessed. Um, Lisa and Liz are phenomenal people. Um, and we meet, we talk about it almost every day. We text about it almost every day, trying to figure out what's going on, what they hear out in the market from other police, other places, their friends, that kind of stuff. That we can get that information back to HR to have HR say, you know, I know what you're getting on 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 this information from you know market, way you know your market analysis you're doing, but here's reality, what's happening in the marketplace that we're seeing right now, and we're having people leave for, or people are telling us what's going on. So. I think those things are the things that I, I've spent most of my time working on that right now and just trying to figure out how we um, don't end up at 40% or, you know, I, I heard about another facility the other day that they're, they, they're not, they have a 50% vacancy rate of their technologists. I, I can't even fathom that. I can't, I just can't. I don't know what we do. We'd have to tell somebody no, and I think everybody that is, a, <laughs> is an imaging professional on this uh, on this call would go, "You can say no." <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm with everything that is going on. I mean, certainly uh, the employment employment trends are are not uh, unique to even just healthcare. We're seeing it seeing it anywhere. So, is yeah. there anything? Within that kind of growing employment trends, you know, it's again, it's happening across the physicians, you know, even within the radiology department that you're seeing, I mean, how is this also affecting the community hospital space? Are there any, uh, because of all of this that is happening, are you seeing uh, these trends affecting not just your, your department, but the community hospital? Yeah, I think... So far for us, we've been pretty lucky. We've not had to not or to cancel procedures or roll back our schedules to, you know, to not be able to provide patient care. But we have to look at from a community perspective overall, because we're the only we're the only hospital in the community. We have a community of 45,000 people. We're, we're the one-stop shop. Um, 
So, you know, we've got to keep the doors open. So we have to figure out ways to do that. One of the things that we are doing, we have our own x-ray school. We only, it's a small program. We only have four students. Um, but as in, as of July, we're going to expand this back to six. We had six for years. So we had a couple years in the late 80s, early 90s that, um, man, I'm leaving a little later than that. Kind of like I'm aging myself for sure. Um, probably in the 2000s then. <laughs> Um, like late 90s, early 2000s, where um, we had students that would graduate and couldn't find a job. The market had flipped, totally flipped the other way. And um, so we are going to, so we cut our program back to four. Um, and now we're going to have to expand it because our, our last class graduated with four students and we didn't get to keep any of them because they all wanted to specialize or one of them wanted to be part time and, and work in an office. So we didn't even get to keep any of them. So that's a challenge. All right. Well, that was the last of our, our questions. And so, uh, again, we certainly appreciate the, the conversation today and discussion. It, it has been very interesting to, to hear your perspective. And again, for those who joined today, we will be sending out an archive here in the next couple weeks. Uh, and if you could, please complete the survey that will launch immediately following the webinar. Once we hit close, we would really love to hear your feedback. And if you have any additional questions, you can certainly ask us during that survey. Uh, Russ, is there anything else you'd like to say before we close? I'd just like to thank Bill. I think the, thank you for your leadership and your friendship for all these years. Uh, I do appreciate you sharing your perspective today. Thank you so much. Thanks, I appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you, Bill, and thank you, Russ, for today. All right, goodbye, everybody. Take care.